In this activity, you will learn how to build a shared folder structure with a colleague uh, within, hopefully within your department. Um, it's, the possibilities here are endless. I'm gonna uh, show you two examples and then we will actually build the structure. I will start it off with you and then you will uh, hopefully collaborate with your partner or partners. Um, the possibilities really are endless. Uh, if you take a look over here on the left, um, I've been working with a colleague this year and we uh, are building our units together. So for example, in seventh grade, notice that this folder shared. Um, no, the folders are shared you, and you can tell they're shared by hovering over this little icon here in the center. Uh, you can tell who are the collaborators, who's the owner and what their rights are. And you can always change the settings if you wish. So if you want to remove a colleague um, or add another colleague, you can on their sharing settings. Now, I've selected this folder. I know I've selected it's blue. Um, and here's kind of wanna, what I would like everyone to hopefully build eventually is build units. Um, uh, I have six units here. Uh, they're all for the collections program for English. Um, if, you, if I open it up, um, you can see that we are collaborating on uh, Cornell Notes, uh, guiding questions for uh, the stories. Uh, let me just take you through some of them. So Cornell Notes, uh, guiding questions for each story that we teach. Um, we're also obviously collaborating with the lesson plans. Uh, this is something that's very important. Probably going to be the most helpful um, thing that you can do with a colleague is lesson plan together. Um, you notice that my colleague has already created uh, a couple of templates. I created the other ones. So if you're the owner, you know, you have the right to uh, make some changes. But just remember one thing, everything within this folder that's shared, everyone, uh, if they have the ability to edit, they can pretty much make any changes they wish. Um, uh, a fourth item is rubrics, which is basically some um, uh, screen captures of, the, uh, of a couple of rubrics there. And so that's basically what you're going to build. Uh, you, you're going to be building a folder structure like this. Um, and it's very easy to do. Um, but let me, before we do that, let me just show you one other possibility um, for the future, you know, essentially with students. So if you look at he, right here at these orange folders, I have period one. And within period one, I have uh, all these folders that, I, that were shared with me. So I did not create these folders. These folders were shared with me. And all I had to do um, is go to my share with me folder down here. And this is kind of hard to see. So let me uh, do that. So you have my drive and you have shared with me. So when a student shared a folder with me, uh, all I did was select that folder. And you can select multiple items at once by holding the shift key. And you basically just find a folder where you want to drag and drop. It's, it's easy to do. See, I can actually grab all these items and I can drop them in any one of these folders. I'm not going to do that because I don't even know what these items are. <laughs> um, but that's basically how I did it. So once a student shared the, their folder with me, uh, I explained to them that everything within that folder that they create, I have access to. So, you know, you don't have to create anything for them. They created themselves. It's, it works wonderful. Um, I don't think, uh, I mean, this is, this is a completely amazing. So, for example, Abigail, she's created all these items. She's created folders for all her classes and some, a couple other Google Docs here. And um, I have access to it. And not, I'm not really invading her privacy, if, if you're kind of thinking that. Um, basically, it's just... They explain to them that, look, I, I have access to any one of these uh, items within their folder. So hopefully they, they understand that and don't put anything personal in there. So just make it clear to students that not to drop in personal items like pictures or whatever into these folders. Um, I'll open up another one. Again, I have access to these items. Um, Th this student is still the owner, but I can view them. I can edit them if, if I have editing rights, which I do because it's, it's basically essays. <laughs> um, but there you go. So you can build a folder structure like this. 
Um, I require my students to name the folders exactly the same. The only thing that would be different would be their first name and last name. Um, so that's that's pretty much it with that. Um, and but for right now, back to the uh, activity. And again, that was just two possibilities. And so what we're going to do, since we can actually grab and, and drag and drop items anywhere we want, we're actually going to go back to our professional uh, development folder. You can find it under my drive. Go ahead and double click that. And um, as you can see, there's nothing in it, but we're going to change that right now. So the very I'm going to create one folder with you, and then um, I'm hoping that within the next few minutes uh, you can um, – uh, collaborate and um, share or build other items within this uh, folder structure. So let's go ahead and create one item. You just click new, click on folder, and let's go ahead and name this uh, lesson plans. Click create, and it uh, it's automatically shared. We don't have to share it again. It's inside the shared folder, so we don't have to do anything with sharing anymore. Again, you can check the person who you've shared it with up here um, by hovering that little icon uh, with the two people. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's one folder. And, and right now, all I need to do is create a few more folders. Again, some of the possibilities are rubrics and uh, notes and questions and whatever comes to mind. Uh, go ahead and go wild, but don't go too wild. Um, that's it.